Well, good morning, everyone. We're glad to see you, glad to have you here participating in county government. I don't see any elected officials. I know one elected official that will be walking through the door here in just a second. And uh, we will officially call the uh, February 13th work session meeting to order. And I'd ask the Lieutenant Hess to bring the citizens wishing to speak. Uh, one day early, happy Valentine's Day. Commissioner Crow has uh, little boxes of candy for all of you. Just come up and, and get those for me. <laughs> uh, and let's see, turn off your uh, mobile devices, please, so I don't interfere with the uh, meeting. And uh, we're very honored to have Pastor Ron Cooper from the Rock Church uh, to join with us and give us a little in encouragement and indication and lead our place to the flag. Stand if you're able. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Let's pray. Lord, we ask for your presence and guidance in this meeting today. Lord, we pray for our leaders. And we pray for wisdom to find answers when solutions seem to be evasive. Lord, we pray for this council that they will shoulder the criticism that all good leaders must, but they will do it without offense. Lord, I pray for the courage to move ahead when we should and slow down when it is expedient. We ask that you will guide this meeting to its greatest level of productivity and the time that you've given us to work. Lord, I pray your blessings upon all those that are in, att in attendance here today. And ultimately, Lord, we thank you for your presence in this meeting today. And everything we give thanks for this is the will of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Pastor Cooper. The January 23rd, 2018 work session minutes and the January 23rd board meeting minutes are available for your review. The Pauling County Board of Commissioners would like to take this opportunity to recognize Black History Month. It's an annual celebration uh, of achievements of African Americans. This is the time to acknowledge the central role of African Americans in the United States history. And we have a, a short video here just to Give us a little bit more information and uh, go ahead. The month of February is observed as Black History Month, and we use the month to remember the important contributions and achievements of African Americans throughout our nation's history. As this month of remembrance has begun, let's consider the important reasons why Black History Month is observed each year. Carter G. Woodson was the sole individual responsible for creating the Negro History Week in Washington, D.C. in February of 1926. To Woodson, the black experience was too important simply to be left to a small group of academics and believed that his role was to use black history and culture as a weapon in the struggle for racial uplift. His goal was to ensure that school children would be exposed to black history. Woodson chose the second week in February in order to celebrate the birthdays of Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass. In 1976, the Bicentennial of the United States President Gerald R. Ford expanded the African American Week into a full month. He said the country needed to seize the opportunity to honor the too often neglected accomplishments of African Americans in every area of endeavor throughout our history. Black History Month is an integral part of our nation's tradition in which we continue to promote positive examples of poignant historical events, exemplary leaders, and steps towards societal change. This remembrance is not only deeply meaningful for the African American community, but imperative for the greater understanding of national and world history. And <coughs> And 
that uh, very professional voice who you may recognize as our very own Jeff Harkins, our uh, public information manager. Uh, he did a great job of that. Thanks, Jeff. The uh, positively Paulding uh, today will um, focus on our pit bull rescue that's here in Dallas. So let's look at that. Positively Paulding. <laughs> My name is Jason Flatt. I'm the founder and president of uh, Friends of the Full on Pitbull Rescue, based here in Dallas, Georgia. We were established in 2009. My, my goal is to rescue uh, these dogs from these bad situations. Uh, we rescue responsibly. We don't get in over our heads. Um, we give them everything that they need. They have a home here. Uh, people say, oh, this is heaven. It's beautiful out here. I call this purgatory. There's a better place. You know, you want to be one of 30 dogs, you want to be one of one. There's a, you know, instead of a kennel, there's a couch somewhere for these dogs. So my goal is to find every one of them a home. They come from all different situations. Uh, sometimes it's owner surrenders, a lot of them from the pounds. We do a lot of work with Paulding County, Fulton County, DeKalb County, Henry County, uh, Cobb County. Um, I stay within the state. I don't take dogs from out of state um, because there's just so many here um, that die on a daily basis. But like Little Sal, she came from a horrible situation, um, dog fighting, um, a cruelty case. You can see the scars and she's missing her lip and, um, you know, scars all over the ears and hip, what they call hip marks. Um, she's a to totally adoptable dog. She's sweet. She's loving. I mean, her tail never stops. And she's totally adoptable and somebody can look past the scars. You know, the scars don't define who she is. The scars just let you know what she's been through. We do accept volunteers. We're pretty stringent about who we let into the rescue. You know, um, what we do is tell people come out, meet us, come to our events, come to our adoption days at PetSmart up in Kennesaw. Um, get to know us. Let us get to know you. Once you're trusted, and we check you out, and you know, then we can go further along. We need, yeah, we definitely need volunteers. Definitely need foster homes. You can always contact us through our Facebook page. The name of the rescue is Friends to the Forlorn Pitbull Rescue. Um, you can also um, find us online. We have a website. It's easier at savingpitbulls.org. Uh, reach out to us through the website. Uh, we usually have our events listed on there. I love it here. I want to stay here. And hopefully we can find a place within the county and we can look to do more. You know, I'd love to do more for this county. I'd like to announce that uh, Commissioner Davis and myself uh, will be uh, hosting, along with some of our staff, a town hall meeting uh, next Tuesday, February the 20th, at uh, Stars and Stripes at 6 p.m. Love to have you there. Board of Commissioners, I'd like to recognize Mr. Ray Fletcher for his assistance in the county uh, during this past December in the snowstorm. And Baker Street, Mr. Baker is going to Give us a little more information about uh, this contribution. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, a couple of meetings ago, um, our Parks Director, Michael Justice, and I just made a short presentation on the, uh, the Silver Comet Trail and the uh, situation that occurred after the snowstorm we had in December. And uh, we had a really uh, big mess up there with a lot of trees down. And so we were able to engage uh, Mr. Ray Fletcher uh, and the street service to come up there and help us out. And within just a short period of time, he was able to clear them. And so we just wanted to, to reach out to him and uh, thank him for uh, his efforts. Um, this is like a teachable moment that I always believe in life. Um, you know, you reach out to folks. You don't want to just always reach out to folks and tell them about the bad things. Because a lot of times we in government and those of us in private business, we always hear the bad stuff. I hardly ever hear the good stuff. And so this is a great opportunity. Uh, I reached out to Mr. Fletcher right after Christmas. I had ridden the trail uh, on Christmas Eve day and what a great job that he did to get that thing open. And I think it was from about the 27 mile marker up to the county line, which is the little past the 31 mile marker. So it's an incredible uh, amount of uh, mileage that they had to clear. But these trees were matted together. Uh, to the point where it was actually dangerous for um, our own crews to try to do anything with them. So we had to employ 
Mr. Fletcher and his tree service, and uh, we were very grateful that he was able to clear it for us and get that trail back open. Um, and just to let you know a little bit about him and his, his wife, Linda, uh, they moved in 1985 to Pollock County. So they've been a, a resident here and a business owner since 1985. And um, in, in 2005, he started his tree service here in Pollock. So we appreciate it, and I uh, think we're going to do some pictures. And uh, I don't know if anybody has any comments, but we welcome those. I do. Uh, Ray and Linda have been personal friends of mine for a long time, and they've operated several businesses in the county. And when you hear that there's givers and takers in life, it's very true. This is the epitome of givers. They have always given in the restaurant business when people were without. They were uh, Linda would bring them in, give them a meal. Some people uh, they would give jobs to that that really you know maybe they didn't need them, but they. Ray and them wanted to be a blessing to them. And at a time when, as we know, supply and demand, when all the trees were down, Ray could have went anywhere he wanted to go, raised his price, made a lot of money. He chose to cut his price for us and go out and do that. So I'm, I personally am grateful to y'all. Thank you so much. Under invited guests, we have none. Uh, under bid awards, uh, discuss the action to approve the budgeting, the budgeted purchase of audiovisual equipment to the W. H. Platts Company in the amount of eighty-four thousand one hundred and forty-eight dollars. And Ms. Pollard and Mr. Harkins may come out of the back room. They come. He is going to. Um, I'll mess this up, so <laughs> he's going to come and make sure I keep it straight. We did receive three bids. Um, there's a lot of things going on in this room. Those three bids range from 84148 to 99687. Um, and this was a budgeted expense, and so we're recommending awards to the way bid, WH Platt. And Jeff's here to tell you specifically what you could expect to be different. Morning. Good morning. Morning. Um, these are some pretty important upgrades to this room and to our media studio to provide. Uh, a little higher quality content um, over multiple platforms to the citizens. Um, and it should provide us with uh, the capability to do that for years to come. Uh, I know this is a big purchase, but uh, I'm pretty confident that we'll be able to uh, do what we need to do for years and years to come. Uh, go in HD and uh, the ability to live stream. So. Uh, Citizens won't need to bring their cameras in. We'll provide it to them, and they can watch it on their phones or their computers or anything they want to do. So, um, if y'all have any questions specifically for me, this company came in the lowest bidder, but they also were the most responsive. They are throwing in some free training, about a $2,500 value, and they've just gone above and beyond. And I think they're going to be a good fit. They've done this for counties and cities throughout the metro Atlanta area. So, any questions? Any questions? I don't think so. You've been working on it a while. So <coughs> since day one. Yeah. You may not know enough to ask your question. Do you have a time, <laughs> just, just curious, do you have a timeline on a live stream possibilities? And I've, I've been asked about that a lot. Well, once we get started, I believe the project will take about six to eight weeks. So, you know, if this gets approved, they'll be out here doing a site visit, hopefully at the end of the week. Thanks so much, Jeff. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. Work. Under reports from committees and departments, we have none this morning. Uh, under public participation on agenda items, no one has signed up. Under consent agenda items, two items. Authorize the chairman to sign an acknowledgement form agreement with Norfolk Southern Railway Company for ATMS phase two dash uh, project number 
Mr. Jones can talk about that if we need him to. Um, number two is to reappoint Jack Hart to the Pauling County Zoning Board of Appeals for a term ending December 31st, 2018. Would any of the commissioners like to move either of these two items to regular business? I don't want to move anything, but I would, wouldn't mind Mr. Jones just explaining a little bit because I've had a couple calls on number one, and that way the public knows what we're doing there. All right. Um, yes, sir. Essentially, it's just a just a legalese agreement with Norfolk Southern Railway. We actually have a um, projects that we're working on to tie into our traffic signals into a traffic control center to be able to better manage um, our signals, time everything better, and we're just trying to uh, basically run fiber optic cable across this bridge. It's going to go underneath the bridge. So we just need this agreement with Norfolk Southern, so they will allow us to um, put conduit underneath the bridge. And that's that the bridge, the Foster Family Bridge at 61. That is correct. exact. Yes, that's the bridge. All right. I just I had three calls on that, and they were just interested what it was. So. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. No other questions. We'll move to old business, and we don't have any old business. Under new business, discuss action to authorize the chairman to enter into an agreement in the amount of $150,000 with R.T. Dallas Georgia Landlord LLC and Pauline Cobb Joint Venture to complete left and right turn lanes and roadway imp improvements at the intersection of State Route 120 and East Pauline Drive. Mr. Jones on that one also. All right. Thank you. Yes. Um, like I said, we're looking to uh, enter in a development agreement with the uh, developer trying to construct a racetrack on the northeast quadrant of the intersection. We're not trying to um, enter into a development just to do the construction. Not that we like don't like to do construction, but there is a, um, a purpose on our end. Um, at the intersection of uh, 120 and East Paulding, especially uh, during the AM peak hour, you have 500 vehicles trying to turn left from East Paulding onto 120 going towards Cobb County. Um, if you've ever been through there at that time, you'll notice the backups are extensive. Um, it's been that way for a while and it just keeps on getting worse. Um, so when the racetrack folks came in um, with their project, it made sense to take our project and uh, implement it at this time to basically make sure that we're getting what we need and um, we can work with their accesses and uh, get them what they need to. So um, this development agreement will cover the estimated cost for the racetrack improvements and the county will cover the cost of the county improvements at this location. So, um, I can answer any other questions regarding this project if you have any. George, I didn't see a, a diagram in the uh, read ahead material. Um, there is your approaching uh, 120 Dallas Marriott Highway. The racetrack will be on your left. Yes, sir. It'll be on the northeast quadrant, yes. And um, how many lanes will it, will it be the uh, cell lane and then the turning lanes, both going back toward Dallas and going toward Marietta? How wide will it get there? Um, at the signal itself at 120 on uh, East Pauling, the East Pauling, you'll have a dedicated left lane. You'll have a left through lane, the through going into the um, commercial development across the road and then you'll have a right turn lane. Going northbound on um, East Paulding you'll have a through lane going towards the New Hope and you'll have um, an east cell lane going into the uh, racetrack development. Any other questions? Thank you. Thanks so much. New business item number two is to discuss action to authorize the chairman to sign an intergovernmental agreement with Paulding County School District regarding the use of buses for various community events. Ms. Skippable. This is an intergovernmental agreement with the district. It's for 10 years. Um, we had been doing the same agreement but on an individual case-by-case -case basis and this just is a request from the district that we no longer do it that way but put it as a blanket agreement. Um, that would last 10 years with the district. The basic terms are that we would be allowed to use school buses for various county events and, you know, provided they're available from the district. 
and that we would reimburse them 50 cents per mile um, and that we contract to have licensed bus drivers drive them. Questions? So this permits uh, redoing a IGA every year? Um, and it, it's really been more than that. We've, we've done it different years, year to year, and we've also done it project to project. So um, this would stop having to do that any longer. That's basically basic, the, the same type of agreement that the school system has with uh, any kind of uh, school function for bands or any other outside extracurricular activities going on. Anytime the bus leaves the county that the band, the high school band or whoever that is has to pay the hourly rate of the driver. And of course they're saying we have to use the right driver and then it's 50 cents a mile. So there's, right. that's the same thing to have. Anything inside the county, there's not a charge to those groups, but if they go outside, there is a charge. Any other comments? Well, this may be a new record. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Amen. So, you guys want to go into executive session? <laughs> <laughs> Please not. <laughs> I will uh, just open the floor. Any of the post commissioners like to comment on anything? I'll say, um, I know Dave, you've got the town hall scheduled, and uh, you and I didn't talk a lot about that, but I. Uh, um, appreciate the uh, the effort there from the from the chair uh, to have this board represented um, regularly throughout the year around the county, and uh, I plan on being at all of them, whether they're in Coastal or not, and um, as long as scheduling allows. So I, I do appreciate that. We, uh, the uh, county administrative team, Frank Baker and Scott Green, myself, uh, have identified um, at least one per quarter cycling around the, the four different posts, and that would be a minimum, so um, look forward to sharing, sharing those locations with the post commissioners and getting the information out there that uh, the public would like to hear have a lot of long question and answer time. <coughs> All right then, conclusion of regular business, executive session, we have none. Public participation on non agenda items. No one has signed up. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Commissioner Pownell is a second. Second. Commissioner Davis, all those in favor say aye. 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 We stand adjourned.